There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There are lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. Today is October 30th, 1987. This is tape number 42. I've had some luck examining the water samples from the marsh. There are what seem to be traces of nucleic acids that are similar to those I found in Judy's blood, which means that whatever changed the makeup of Judy's transcriptor factor proteins must have similarly affected species living in the marsh. A foreign element has been introduced into the equation. Considering the strange phenomenon reported by Frank Howard and the geologist Mr. Darcy, it must have something to do with those rocks. Darcy has verified that they are in fact part of a meteor, perhaps millions of years old. As for Kenny Howard, I was only able to give him one treatment and now have no way of checking his response although his erratic behavior is indicative that the enzyme may be having a similar effect on him, as it did with Judy Caterbeck. Magnus Becker seems to think he can help bringing Kenny back, so I can complete my research. In any case, I'll be packing up my essentials here and preparing for a move to... Hello? Mr. Howard, come in. I'm sorry, my receptionist is away. Doctor, it's about Kenny. Yes. How is he feeling? He's gone, Doctor. He took off my truck on Tuesday. He, he was... He just wasn't himself. Hmm. Did he say anything about where he was going? No. He just sounded like he was... not thinking clearly. I don't know what to do. I called the police, but... And have you heard from them? Have there been any reports? I called two or three times a day. They said an officer had pursued him from East Haddam but that he left the jurisdiction of the precinct and that there have been reports from upstate, traffic accidents, and my plate number was reported. Hmm. Doctor, what could explain this behavior? With all that happened at the marsh, I have to wonder if he caught some sort of virus, like a parasite or something? He needs to be brought in for psychological evaluation. I'm afraid this is far outside my area of expertise. I can't bring him in! <sighs> Don't you have any information that might help? I'm at my wit's end. I'm really very sorry. I'd like to help you. I, I can recommend someone for him to see when he turns up. The police will find him. They will. I know how this ends for young black men, Doctor. He's acting crazy and unpredictable. The police aren't going to ask him questions. Casey. Hello, Doctor. Mr. Howard. <sighs> Hi, Casey. Sir, I'm really sorry to hear about Kenny running off like that. You know about that? Mr. Darcy told Dr. Fousey and I yesterday. I, uh, Casey, go ahead and get settled. I'll, I'll talk to you in a moment. W wait, you did know about it? Darcy said something to us about Kenny. I, I didn't know the whole story. I. What the hell kind of doctor are you? Why did you say you didn't know? Uh, Mr. Howard... <laughs> What can I do? I, I want to help. Nothing, Casey. I'll handle this myself. Dr. Hands know you're here. Why don't you have a seat, Miss Rudolph? Thank you. What do you plan on saying to him? Details about the treatments, which drugs were used, which were not FDA approved. And that Fousey synthesized an enzyme himself. 
also that we overheard him planning to continue his experiments with Kenny Howard. We don't have to tell him who met with him that day. We'll just say we... No, Bonnie. It all has to come out. The, the police will find out anyway. I mean, eventually. In the car, I was thinking back to my conversations with Judy. We kept her for observation for like an hour after each treatment, and I knew she loved her rock collection, so we talked about that a lot. It helped calm her. The treatments had side effects that made her irritable, anxious. You said her father collected them for her? Yeah, they went down to the marsh together a lot. Uh, Bo was teaching her to fish. She talked about an uncle. I think she called him Uncle Pate. I, I guess he must have been a geologist because he told her stories about the rocks. Her favorite one that I mentioned before, she said that it had thousands and thousands of stories. And she called it the mother load. And as she got worse, she got more worried about someone taking that stone away from her. Oh. So she hid it in her room under the floorboards. It was hard to see her losing control like that. She was just, she was just a sweet little girl. Is it even possible that she committed the murders? I mean, a nine-year-old, seven children? It, it seems far-fetched. It is strange. They say there was no one else in the house. I mean, Renee, her mother, told the news some crazy theory about a pharmaceutical company, but she- Dr. Haynes will see you now. Please come this way. Dr. Fousey ever explain to you what the headgear was for? It's divergent from the standard issue orthodontic item. He told Judy's parents that it was to correct her retronathia. Doctor, in some of the crazier sections of the tapes he made, he talked about drawing out a fully evolved mutation. I know it sounds insane, but he seems to believe it. He goes on at length about it. The guy was experimenting on a child. Shouldn't he have his license taken away, or, or at least be arrested? There's a police investigation underway, but it's focusing entirely on the murder, as far as I know. We'll alert them to your information and see what can be done. But there are more recent developments. This morning, Judy attacked a nurse. She bit deep into his shoulder. <gasps> what? Oh, my God. He was treated here and then rushed to the emergency room. She's dangerous, and I'm afraid this will ensure she stays incarcerated for some time. Her parents haven't been informed yet. exit. What the hell? Jesus Christ. What the hell happened here? Wait a minute, I'm calling it in. 231137, I've got a situation here. Uh, code 6 and uh, um, a code 53. He had some kind of sonic weapon or I don't know. Uh, Car 61 went off the road into a stone wall. There's no way he got out of that car. Requesting backup. How much of a head start does he have on me? I couldn't get to him in time. I just couldn't. where we're going? It's just a field. You're coming with me, guys. I can't be flying blind. We're close now. I'll show you the way. Over this hill? What's that sound? 
Friends of yours? The more the merrier. See that over there? That's where we're all going. What does it say? Westmore State Psychiatric Hospital. What is it, Bo? Do you hear something? Is it Judy? Listen. Visiting hours will be over soon, Bo. We have to go see Judy. What do you hear? They're coming to help. They said they could help. I have to bring the rocks. Who is he? Do you know him? You've got rocks too! I knew that because they told me. You can hear them too. It's not just me, right? I don't understand, Bo. We have to go in to see- Judy, Ju right? They told me that too. Once it became clear to me what Fousey was up to, I had to get Judy out of there. I talked to her parents about it, but they had bought into Fousey's lies about the treatment. They wouldn't believe anything I told them. It's how he operates. The Caterbecks made an appointment to see her today. We have to turn them away, of course. Doctor, we're going to head back to East Haddam today to talk to the police. So if there's... Security, Ward 3, right away. Stay here, please. Frogs again? We're just here to see our friend, Judy! Oh god, that's Kenny Howard! Hold up there! You can't be in this part of the hospital! What is that sound? Ah! Ah! Okay, I've got the keys. It's this way, Judy! We need to get out of here. Bo! Wait! Please! What are you doing? They'll arrest you, dearest! Renee, it's not safe. Don't let him go in there. What are you doing here? I came to help Judy, Renee. But, but you gotta stop Bo, please. What do you know about this? You're working with them, aren't you? Mrs. Caterbeck, it's dangerous. And you, too? In here. They let her out. The receptionist is out cold. Come on! Come on! Hello? Hello? There's a violent situation at Westmore Psychiatric Hospital. Yes! Please come quickly! Get back! Judy, you've got to get back in your room. Now! Will you come with me, Judy? Doctor! Run! Run for cover! Thanks for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 6 of Mandible Judy. Our cast this week was Chris Burke, Tyler Jackson Price, John Constantine, Dominique Sean, Lee Eddy, Aaron Lillis, David Steele, Tamri Adele, Richard Haynes, Ty Anderson, Gabriel Hicks, Nancy Graham, and Mark Devaney. Music is by Glomag. Follow Mandible Judy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen. We rely on support from our listeners, so please help us keep the series going at patreon.com slash mandiblejudy. 